Hello and welcome to a new video by the AM Academy. Now recently we had a webinar comparing the Freescan UE7 and the Einscan HX, two handheld laser light scanners by Shining 3D. Now because I still have the UE7 here, I figured I would do a little bit more in-depth of a video on this specific scanner. So. In this video right now, we'll take it out of the box, we'll see what's included, we'll connect it to the PC, and then we will calibrate the scanner. Then there will be follow-up videos on scanning some of the parts I have around me here, uh, the wheel right there, then I have a front part of a uh, motor scooter, and then I have a front grille from an old VW. So I'll have all three of these parts. Uh, just so we can have a closer look at how the UE7 actually works. Right, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, all the Shining 3D handheld scanners so far come in these nice boxes. I'm just going to open this one up. And then on the inside, we can see that the scanner is in the center. Let me just take this one out of the box. It looks very nice. It's very, very light, not even 700 grams in weight. Uh, it fits nicely into your hand. Uh, so this should not be an issue to work with even for extended uh, periods of time. Then, of course, I have a little power brick. I have the USB cable, which is almost identical to the previous ones. Uh, it's four and a half meters long. So you have a lot of freedom of movement. Um, and of course, then there is another power plug specific to your region that goes into the power brick itself. Of course, along with everything else, there's a big stack of uh, markers. And why these are super important, we'll see in a little bit once we actually get to scanning. And additionally, there is a USB stick, one with the software and one which is a Sentinel key, which uh, unlocks the software. So uh, the software, unlike the software for the Einscan HX, actually needs a little dongle in order to work properly. All right, I'm gonna get all these markers back in here. And then I can take this out. There are two like gaps at the sides and I can lift out this little foam packaging and underneath I can then find the calibration plate. I quite like this setup uh, over the variant they had with the Einscan HX where the plate was always at the top. I prefer this one. It keeps the plate safer. It's not always in the way. You don't always have to move it in and out anytime you want to access anything underneath. So I really like this. I'm gonna put this back into the case, close it up, put it back behind me. And now we can get to actually connecting everything. Put this aside for the time being. Of course, the power cable going into the power brick is pretty obvious. Then on the USB cable, there's a little inlet for the power cable. Connect that. And then you want to connect the other end to your 3D scanner. There's a USB plug, which goes here. And then the uh, power connector, which just goes right next to it. Then you simply plug, well, where is it? Where is it? the power plug into the uh, power outlet and the USB cable into the computer. I'll do that real quick and then we can get to calibrating. All right, so I've connected the scanner to the computer. I've also connected the little Sentinel dongle without which the software wouldn't start. And then I launched the software. Whenever you start using a 3D scanner, calibrating it is crucial to ensure maximum accuracy. Uh, this is especially true whenever you've moved to a new environment with different lighting setups. So that's exactly what I'll start with now and show you the whole process. Um, the calibration board that we had in the uh, box with the scanner looks like this. It is white and it has all these markers on it. These calibration boards are specific to uh, the scanners and they have little numbers in the top so you can, if you have multiple, make sure you don't mix them up because a different uh, scanner will not calibrate properly using a different scanner's calibration board. So I'm just going to place this down here on the table and as we're used to with Shining 3D, we do have on-screen instructions on exactly what to do. So I'm going to take my scanner and then on the back there are buttons and the bottom big one, I'll try to get a bit closer to the camera here so it picks this up properly. So there's one bigger one on the bottom and then there's a center one that is lit up 
with uh, more buttons around it. And this up here is a quick menu, and this is the start and stop button. So that's how I'm going to initiate the calibration process. I click my start button, and then I'm supposed to hold the scanner exactly above the calibration plate, and we can see uh, that I want the blue circle to align with the green one. And these two bars at the top and on the side show me how to angle and uh, rotate my scanner. And then these little uh, rectangles on the side there, they show me whether to get closer or further away. So I still need to get closer. And the uh, scanner makes little clicks. So there's a speaker on the scanner and it makes a little click whenever I've validated one of the rectangles. Okay. So I've done all the straight ones. Now the on-screen instruction tells me angle forward. And that's exactly what I'll be doing. And then once again, I need to achieve different distances. This is the part where I feel like this is way too finicky and it's very difficult to get right. Uh, I do not like this part of this uh, calibration process. So getting closer is no problem, but the... Uh, one that was far away. I haven't been able to do that one yet. And now the close ones didn't work. So I move away again and then come on. And this last one here. Uh, I've started to suspect that it's actually very bright where I am. And that confuses the scanner with the last bit because it struggles to see that last square. But we did make it work. It did, it did happen. Now I need to angle backwards. So the other way. And uh, once again, do the same process again. Just move closer and further away while angling it properly. And it's not picking it up. I need to position myself a bit better, I guess. There we go. That's the two closest squares. And now I just have to keep the scanner stable and keep moving away. Oh, I'm not angling far enough. No, I'm angling too far. There we go. That's what the little bar on the side told me. Okay, I've got that square. Come on. There we've got that one. And now just one last one. There we go. Perfect. Now I angle it to the side. And uh, otherwise keep it centered nice and closely. And I'll start at the bottom because that one's easier. Now I just need to move away again. There we go. Now I'm all I'm missing is the center one, this middle one right here. Uh, there we go. Perfect. And last but not least, the other side as well. Once again, I'll start in close. It is usually the easier one to do. And I'm angling it a bit wrong. There we go. Now I can just move away. Well, did still want it to be aligned properly. There we go. And I've skipped two, so I need to pick those up. Keep angling it a bit which is why the software is complaining. Now I just need the farthest away one, which I always find the hardest one. Uh, come on. There, there. And then like this, and now I just, come on. Come on. There we go, we did it. Okay, as you can see, um, not as nice. I really preferred the Einscan HX version of the calibration, but it does work. Uh, it takes some getting used to. I think the more I'm going to do this, the more comfortable I will get, and uh, the faster I will actually be able to go through this whole calibration process. Now it does say calibration success gives us a number of the calibration deviation, and one thing that is nice about this process is that because the plate is white, the white balance calibration has already happened as well. So while for the Einscan HX, we would have to do a laser calibration, a white balance calibration, and one of these dot calibrations with a board. Here it is all in one, and we are now ready to scan. I click complete scan initializing. This is where the scanning process actually starts, and that means this video now is done. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. 
any questions or comments you can leave below. Please do subscribe to the channel if you did like this. We'll have more videos coming your way. Specifically, I'm now going to start making the next one where I actually scan one of these parts that I have here using the UE7 that we just calibrated. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.